In this Autodesk Fusion 360 tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can make more robust parametric models for CNC machining. What do I mean by a robust parametric model? Well, we want to be able to change parameters and dimensions and have all of the design history in Fusion 360 update automatically and not cause too many errors or warnings. There's no guarantee that a complex model won't have some things to fix if you update it, but with a few of these techniques, you will be able to make models that update more easily. The first tip we wanna make sure we do is modify change parameters. And we wanna set a user parameter for our plywood thickness. This is for plywood CNC machining, but you can use it for other materials as well. So I'm gonna enter in ply, and the plywood I'm using is 18 millimeters thick or a three quarter inch equivalent. We can go ahead and write there in the bottom what it means then it's a good idea to have some other parameters as well. We can have a parameter for tolerance. So if I type in tolerance, and then for right now, we can just type this as 0.1 millimeter. We can update that later, but this way we can build that into our model and have it from the beginning. Then we can add a user parameter of width, and let's say this will be 500 uh, millimeters. And remember in Fusion, you can switch from inches to millimeters as much as you want. And for this demonstration, I'll just have another user parameter of height. And we'll also make that in millimeters and we'll make it 600 millimeters. And then finally, the last user parameter of depth. And we will make that 300 millimeters. So this will be a small item. And we're gonna go ahead and pause there with the user parameters. Now, when the first rule of Fusion 360 is to go ahead and create a component, so I'll create a new component, and I'll name this component side, because we'll create a side, and I'll press OK. Now, I could go ahead and create a sketch, but remember, we're trying to make a robust model, so I want to create sketches that refer as much as possible to the origin, because the origin is the one thing that could never change. If I refer to other entities and I delete one or change one, an edge might disappear and it won't be robust. But if I reference from the origin, then it will be much more stable. So I'm gonna create an offset plane and I'm gonna create it from this vertical plane of the origin. And then I'm gonna pull away and the distance will be width divided by two. So now you can see that this is half the width of 500 millimeters and 250 millimeters away. That way that will always reference from there. Now, if I create my sketch on this plane, this will be much more resilient. So now I'm just gonna go ahead and I'll create a rectangle here, and I'm intentionally creating it off the origin. I'll press D to do a dimension, and I'll make this one height. And this other dimension, I'm going to make depth. So now I have this object here, but I want to move it so it's on the origin. And it's generally a good idea to have it on the center of the origin. Now there's two ways to think about this. You may want to have the height in the middle. So if that's the case, we could draw a construction line and have it centered here. A lot of times I like to have the ground be the origin. So in this case, I'm gonna grab the midpoint, click that line, then click the origin. Now everything is fully constrained and I can finish my sketch. Next, I'm gonna go ahead and extrude and remember, this is the width, right? So it's half the width. So I can either extrude out and my object will be two plywood thicknesses bigger than the width, or I could extrude in and have it be exactly the width. This is just based on your design. So I'm gonna press E to extrude, and I'm actually gonna type negative ply. So the overall width parameter actually describes the real outside width of my object in case it needs to fit somewhere. So now I have this plywood, and then I can merely use the create mirror command. So I'm gonna go up to the top level component here, and it's important that you do this at the top level, and then I'm gonna create mirror, and it asks me what I wanna do, and I wanna do components, this component. What is the mirror plane? This one. And so now if I go ahead and inspect measure, and I measure from this edge to this edge, you'll notice it's exactly 500 millimeters. So that's the width of our object. And if I close that and then I go modify, change parameters, and I make the width now, let's say 700, and I say, okay, 
Notice everything updates. And if I inspect, I can click this edge and this edge, and now it is 700 millimeters. And that's because we are using that dimension to have that offset plane. I could make this even more resilient. So you notice I've used a mirror command. A lot of times I like to use a mirror command because then it automatically moves it over. But sometimes you may not want to do that. Sometimes you may want to actually have two offset planes because perhaps the sides are slightly different, but you still want to be able to change the width. So let's go ahead and delete this mirror object right here. So I'm going to delete that. And then I'm going to go ahead and create a new component. So this is another way of making an object, and I'm going to call this side two. So once again, I'll create an offset plane, and I want to reference the origin because the origin isn't going to change. And this time I'm going to go negative width divided by two. And then I can go ahead and create a sketch on this plane. I could project from this object, but once again, that means I'm relying on that object. And if it changes at all, it may be different. So projecting is a great way if you want to keep it the same or reference those changes. But I can also just draw a new rectangle and give it its own dimension. So I can give this one a depth of height. And then this dimension will be depth. And this is exactly the same result. There's more than one way to do everything in Fusion. And so now I've created two sketches that are the same. And now if I orbit, I have this brand new sketch that I can edit independently of this one, yet the width will stay the same. So I'll press E to extrude. And this time I want to go in to keep that width and I'm gonna type ply. So if I go back up to the top level component by clicking this circle in the browser, you can see I have the same result, but now it's even more resilient. So now that's still 700 millimeters, our depth. I can go modify, change parameters, and then I can go back to our original width of 500. And then I can say, okay. So now all that has updated. So let's add one more component to this. So I'm going to go to the top level and I'm gonna create a new component and I'm gonna call this component bottom. And I don't want it to be exactly on the bottom. I'm gonna have these pieces actually be resting on the ground. And so I'm going to create an offset plane. And before I do that, I'm going to modify, create a new parameter here. And we'll call this parameter bottom offset. And we'll make it, let's say, uh, 25 millimeters up. And so then I'm going to create an offset plane. And once again, I want to create from the origin. So I'm gonna create from this bottom here and I'm gonna call this bottom offset. So now I have an offset plane that's just a little bit off the ground there. And I'll create a sketch right on that offset plane. And once again, I could press P to project and include these pieces of geometry. And that's a perfectly fine way to work. Uh, I'll show you how to do that. So if I press P, I can select uh, with this selection filter, I can pick this edge and this edge and press OK. And now I can draw an R rectangle straight to there, and I instantly have everything locked in. Now, if I know for sure in my design that I definitely want to have the bottom line up with that, this is a great way to do it. And then if I finish my sketch, I can go ahead and extrude that. Right? But let's go Control Z, Command Z, and see another way to do that. So we'll go ahead and make a center point rectangle, create rectangle, center rectangle, and I'll start at the origin here. And then I'm going to type depth, tab, and then this will be width. There we go. So now I have the exact same thing, except now it's being referenced from actual dimensions and it's not reliant on those other two sides. Both are very resilient, but this, depending on your design, could be even more resilient. Now I'm going to go ahead and draw two lines. I'm going to draw a line here, and then I'm going to draw a line here. And I'm going to give this a dimension from the side, and I'm going to go ply divided by two. And then from here, I'm going to give this ply divided by two. So now if I finish my sketch, I can go ahead and extrude. 
if I extrude straight up, my ply will be offset from the bottom just the way I had it with the ply offset. And I can go up to the top here, and now I can subtract out these things. So I have to subtract out this part right here. So I can go to the combine tool and I can pick the target body and then the tool body will be this and the operation will be cut. And I wanna make sure I click keep tools and press okay. Then I'll do it one more time over here. And if I modify, this is the target body. This is the tool body. Everything else is the same. And I press okay. I'm gonna turn on component color cycling right here. So now I can see everything that's different. And we have a very robust model, so we can modify our user parameters. So if I change my parameters and I do this bottom offset and I make this 75, notice that the bottom goes up a little bit. So hopefully that gives you one way to add in some resiliency by referencing the origin in Fusion 360. Of course, projecting from other objects is totally fine. It's just you want to try to think about what is the most permanent features of your model and use those as your references. Happy 3D modeling.